It's been a little more than 5 months since I've used the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro as my main personal laptop and I have been loving it. I bought this laptop because it was the highest spec non-gaming laptop I could find below $1,000 final price after taxes. It was either between this and the last gen Acer Swift X, but the config that I wanted for it was a super gross pea color, so I went for Lenovo's clean, boring look instead. This IdeaPad 5 Pro has a 16-inch 120Hz display, a Ryzen 7 5800H processor, and a GTX 1650. I know the 1650 doesn't sound too exciting in 2022, but hey, GPU prices are are still insane so you gotta get what you can get. But yeah, everything else about this laptop sounded super promising, but how's it really been in the past 5 months? I'm going to rate each major part of this laptop, average up the scores, and see what grade this laptop gets. But first, let me talk about our sponsor for this video, PDF Agile. If you're going to be working on a laptop like this, you need a robust PDF reader and editor for your workflow, whether it's schoolwork or work work. It's really great for marking up documents for your schoolmates or coworkers, but PDF Agile isn't just a reader slash editor either. You can convert native PDF files to Word files and on the other end, DWG files to PDF files. On top of that, you can OCR any image or document up to 22 languages. This means you can convert an image to an editable Word file. Besides editing, converting, and OCR, there's always the issue of a giant PDF file that you have trouble sending over. But PDF Agile's compression tools make it super easy. You can compress, split, delete, merge, or unmerge PDFs with ease to save and send over via email. If you've been looking for an affordable PDF tool, make sure to click the link below to download PDF Agile for free today and use a redeem code to get yourself one month free of the premium version. In terms of design, I gotta admit, IdeaPad laptops are getting pretty boring, and this IdeaPad 5 Pro is more of the same. That is what it is, but this is still clean, professional, and actually the most refined IdeaPad I've used yet. The rounded corners make this really nice to hold and move around with, the hinges are very solid, there's no creaking, you can open it with one hand, and it's not a flimsy mess. The laptop does weigh 1.9 kilograms, or a little over 4 pounds, so it is heavy, but not unbearable. Even though the laptop is mostly made of anodized aluminum, it doesn't feel the most premium as it gives off a bit of a plastic feel. But it is really solidly built, and I really haven't found any imperfections to the overall build quality here. It's also a dual fan design that vents out through the bottom and the hinge area, and when opened, you can upgrade a couple of things including the single M2 SSD slot and the Wi-Fi card. But the RAM is soldered and it is not user upgradable. The RAM might sound like a bit of a bummer, but the port selection might make up for it. You really get everything here two USB A's, one SD card reader, one HDMI 1.4, one USB C with display port and power delivery, and a headphone microphone jack. It's pretty amazing getting this selection of ports on a sub $1,000 laptop that's not a workstation tank. My only complaint about the hardware here is that it's the big laptop and it won't fit into a lot of medium sized laptop sleeves and backpacks. All in all, I love the exterior design and hardware here. It's much improved from previous iterations and I have no major complaints here unlike some of the older IdeaPad models. We're actually at a good spot here. I hope Lenovo improves on these refinements and doesn't change the IdeaPad too much from here. I give the IdeaPad 5 Pro a solid 8 out of 10 in design. Now let's talk keyboard and trackpad. I wanted to leave this part as a separate component to the design section because it's such an important part of the laptop. Good news is that the keyboard here is actually very good now. There's two stage backlighting, all the function keys you need up at the top, decent travel and spacing even with the number pad on the right hand side. There's a really nice soft feeling when typing with this keyboard, which keeps it quiet and satisfying to type on. I read some reviews not liking the mushy feeling, but I actually love how this types much more so than something more like a tactile, low travel experience. I would still prefer not having the number pad, but because the spacing is good, it's almost like it's not there anymore. The palm rests are also very spacious, so you can comfortably rest your palms here and type away. Moving on to the trackpad, it's pretty decently sized and has a plastic surface, but overall sensitivity is very good and gestures work perfectly. The clicking is definitely not a super satisfying feel, and you definitely can't left click anywhere like on a MacBook, but it doesn't rattle and functions very well. It's better than okay, not great, and definitely not bad. The keyboard is a decent win, but the trackpad is just better than average, so considering the price point, I also give the keyboard and trackpad a solid 8 out of 10. Moving on to the big display, the IdeaPad 5 Pro has a 16-inch WQXG8 IPS display with a 120Hz refresh rate. This is my first time with a high refresh rate Windows laptop and it is glorious. I don't think I can ever go back. Super smooth animations and really great for gaming. 
It's a matte anti-glare display as well, so it's great for preventing reflections. This is a big screen, and the screen real estate is really efficient too, considering the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Great for all kinds of content, from entertainment to games to text. The screen resolution might not be 4K, but it's a good midpoint, and I don't see any pixelation here. It's also color accurate with no weird hues or anything of that sort, so it's pretty decent for creative work. My only gripe with this display is most definitely the brightness. It caps out at 350 nits, which is low. It's not too much of an issue indoors, but I am at full brightness most days. If you're outdoors, you're gonna run into a lot of trouble trying to view the display in direct sunlight or other direct light sources. But being such a big laptop, I consider this mostly an at-home machine, so the brightness doesn't become too much of an issue for me, and overall, I really like the display here. Above the display, you have a bare minimum 0.9 megapixel 720p webcam. It's really not good, and that includes the mic quality and the background noise suppression, but it works, and that's what matters. The webcam might not be anything special, but the Windows Hello IR sensor works really great. The unlock speed is super quick, faster than what I experienced on Surface laptops. Lenovo also has a built-in auto-wake feature, which the laptop senses when you're close by, and it automatically turns on the display. And because the face unlock is super responsive, this laptop unlocks from almost the other end of the room. This was really convenient in the beginning, but it started getting really annoying because the laptop turned on and unlocked even when I didn't want it to, so I eventually turned it off. Turning over to the audio side, the Dolby Atmos powered speakers are unfortunately downward facing with these two tiny grills placed below the laptop. The position is definitely not ideal. If you have this laptop on some kind of soft surface like a blanket or pillow, the audio will definitely get muffled. It's really not bad on flat surfaces like a table, but I would have preferred Lenovo not having this number pad here and having the speakers face upwards instead. In terms of volume, these speakers can get loud, and I almost never have these on full blast. There's definitely some distortion going on after the 60% mark. Not much to say about the quality side, it's not bad, not great, just good enough for non-audiophiles. All in all, the IdeaPad 5 Pro gets a good 8 out of 10 for the display and the speakers. Now, let's get on to the most exciting part of this laptop, the internals. This laptop has a Ryzen 7 5800H processor, GTX 1650 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of SSD. Like I said before, you can't upgrade the RAM, but this was an overall great deal for the price, especially because it doesn't have to look like a chunky gamer laptop. The best part is the performance holds up really well because of that Ryzen chip. With a 120Hz refresh rate display, everything just flies on this laptop. Launching software, browsing, and wake up time feel pretty much instantaneous. A bunch of Chrome tabs and multitasking are for sure not an issue here. 4K video editing has also been a very good experience using DaVinci Resolve Studio. Importing files, scrubbing, applying effects, and exporting time have been a non-issue for me. Now, my wife's N1 MacBook Air still does laps around this thing, especially with scrubbing and export time, but for a Windows laptop under $1,000, this has been one of the best experience I've had with photo and video editing. Plus, this is mostly the same experience when just on balance mode without a charger plugged in. But you do get the absolute best performance when being plugged in with extreme performance mode through Lenovo Vantage. There's some fan noise if you have this mode on, but if you don't have this mode on, the performance is still more than acceptable and the general fan noise isn't that loud at all. More than anything, it's mostly the heating that gets a little annoying, but I wouldn't say it's super irritating and doesn't throttle performance. It really doesn't affect the keyboard or trackpad experience. In terms of GPU, I know the GTX 1650 and its 4 gigs of memory isn't anything super exciting. You won't be able to play the highest end AAA games at high settings, but the CPU does make up for that with quick game launch times, and the gameplay is generally very consistent in terms of frame rate. The 4 gigs of memory may be limiting, but some of the latest games do perform very smoothly even at high settings and can basically play any game with at least low to medium settings. If we talk about stability, this laptop has been pretty good there as well. This crashed on me like any Windows laptop, but it hasn't been too bad as Lenovo is pretty good with firmware updates I did feel that this laptop has gotten better with bugs over time. The only real issue I've experienced with the performance here is connectivity. The Wi-Fi card is simply not great. I mean, speed isn't the issue. The problem is that the Wi-Fi simply doesn't connect sometimes when you wake up the laptop from sleep. It's okay after rebooting, but this happens very frequently, sometimes even when I turn on and off the VPN. The good news is that you can replace the Wi-Fi card, but keep in mind that the base version is not good. Overall, I would give the performance here a 9 out of 10 considering the price tag. It's really hard to find a Windows laptop with this level of performance and internals. 
The IdeaPad 5 Pro has a 4 cell 75 watt hour battery and for a laptop of this size the battery life is actually awesome. I get about 8 hours of real use on balance mode and this is one of the only Windows laptops that I've had that I can just close and leave it for days and it will still have some juice left. The standby time is just great and all this is due to the efficient Ryzen chip inside and Lenovo's optimization skills. You power this laptop through a 135 watt charger that plugs in on the left side here. It's not a USB-C plug but it gets the job done and the charging time is actually pretty quick. You can get up to 3 hours of usage with just a 15 minute charge which is pretty crazy for a laptop. Really not much to say here other than great job Lenovo. I give the battery life a 9 out of 10 considering the size, power, and price of this laptop. Putting everything together with some extra credit, I give this laptop a very good B+. It's not going to turn heads with how it looks and their overall laptop experience isn't for most consumers. But for those of us that want a portable, creative, and also gaming workstation that doesn't look like a RGB googly goo with a very reasonable price tag, it's really tough to beat the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 in the Windows market. I fully recommend this laptop, but I just hope it's available wherever you're located because Lenovo has already discontinued this model in several markets. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Really looking forward to making more videos after my recent move to South Korea. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about this laptop and I'll see you guys on the next video.